Hello ladies, in today's video I want to talk about the feminine energy and how to lean back. How to lean back so the man we want, the man we like, is consistently pursuing us. In previous videos I've mentioned that if you want a man to chase you, to pursue you, you can't always be leaning in, always be initiating contact, always be asking him out. Right? You want to switch that role so he's the one pursuing and you're the one leaning back and you're embracing that cold feminine energy. Today I want to talk about the number one problem women have when it comes to leaning back. The number one for sure problem is women can't control themselves. If you keep leaning in, keep chasing, even though you know you probably shouldn't, even though you know intellectually you shouldn't, this video is for you, okay? So I find the number one reason women can't control themselves and they chase and pursue and text is because of the big four letter F word. <laughs> Can you guess what that is? Fear. It's fear. It's always fear. The fear of not getting your needs met. The fear that he's going to disappear. Okay. The fear of not knowing what's going to happen. Of sitting in uncertainty. It's uncomfortable. It creates a lot of anxiety for a lot of women. Okay. That's why women find it really, really difficult to lean back when we're in fear because your brain's freaking out. It's in terror mode. It's in fight or flight mode. It can't lean back. It can't be resting, you know, and taking a nap because it's on edge, right? It makes sense. And I really want to speak to women out there that feel as if they're doing a good job leaning back and the biggest reason why you may have a have a, have it easier time leaning back is probably because you don't really like the guy that much. When we are not that invested in a man, we don't like a man that much, it's easy to lean back because we don't really care. We're not emotionally invested. You know, we're not going to be that emotionally traumatized or bothered if he suddenly disappears, you know, but the story is very different if we are invested, if we really like someone. Let me tell you, fear is great to have, right? It's, it's not a bad thing. What does fear tell us? Fear tells us that you're actually investing. You're actually allowing yourself to be vulnerable to a connection. And that's the only time we can have a relationship when we are vulnerable. If you're dating and you never feel fear, you don't find it difficult at all to lean back, that tells me you're not vulnerable enough. You're not really opening yourself up to that connection, to having that connection, that deeper connection to like someone. Because we can only like someone based off of how willing we are to open to that person. If, if we're closed off, everything is superficial, it's kind of easy to walk away, right? We're just like, well, I didn't really reveal anything about myself. He didn't really reveal anything of himself. So if it doesn't work out, oh well, you know, we're not that invested. So fear is a sign that at least you're putting yourself out there. You're showing up. You're showing somebody who you are and it's going to feel scary. It's meant to feel scary. When we like someone, it's gonna feel scary. <laughs> if you don't like them, well, yeah. So fear is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. The problem isn't fear itself, it is how women are reacting to that fear. Okay, fear in your body is just a vibration in your body, it will come and wash over you, and then if you process it all the way through, it's gonna go just like any other emotion. Emotions can't stay in our body unless we're like grabbing onto it for some reason, okay? But if we just process it naturally in a healthy way, it will just wash all over us and it will disappear. The problem is 
a lot of women are feeling the fear and then they're reacting to it. And when you react to that fear, you're, it's like you're grabbing onto it. You're making it worse. You're stacking on fear. There is the fear, the primary fear of what we feel when we like someone. And then if you grab onto it, you're adding to it the anxiety. You're adding meaning to it. You're creating more drama around it. This is what makes it worse. This is why women will impulsively send a text message. They will justify and say, well, I'm a modern woman. It's cool. I sent a message. He sent me a message last week. I can send a message this week. I just want to know how he feels about me. I, I want to have the talk, even though we've only known, known each other for two dates. I just want to know, right? Because they can't sit in that discomfort. They don't know how to process it. They don't know how to properly allow it to run through them. They do these knee-jerk reactive things that actually make it worse. And the making it worse part often happens not from the fear, but from what they do in reaction to the fear, right? In the reaction to it, and then they attach more and more judgment and, you know, thoughts, negativity on top of that. So it just creates, it creates a massive big snowball. It's a big snowball of negative drama. And by the way, this is why women experience dating burnout. Dating burnout is created from all the emotional drama that you create in your head, okay? It's not happening outside of you, it's just all happening in your head because you don't know how to handle the initial fear, you create all this drama around it. Burnout is also like you're constantly back and forth emotionally, you know, what does it mean? Does he like me? What he's doing this? What does that mean? Asking your 10 million friends, what's going on? What do you think he's thinking? And then wondering, okay, should I, should I break up with him? Should I keep going? Should I have this talk? Okay. What does it mean if he's doing this? What does it mean about me? What does it mean about him? What does it mean about love and the whole universe, you know, and just creating all of this chatter around it. It's mental exhaustion. Right? You're mentally hustling all over the place. <laughs> that's why you're experiencing burnout. And that's why when it ends, most of the time, you'll be the one to initiate the end because you're just like, I just can't handle all this, all this drama. So you tell the guy, I can't deal with this. You don't like me enough. Let's put an end to it. Or you, know, you make it so negative for him that he ends it. But really, you're the one ending it. Right, I see a lot of women initiating no contact, uh, wanting to, to cut this guy off because it's just too much mental stress on them. And then they say, okay, I'm going to take a break from dating because it's too stressful. As if dating burnout is something that just happens to them, right? It doesn't just happen to you, ladies. You are creating it in your mind. I stopped experiencing dating burnout when I realized what I was doing with my own head, with my own <laughs> thinking, okay? So I stopped attaching all this additional meaning to if he messaged or if he didn't message, right? If he messaged or if he didn't message, it doesn't mean anything about me, it doesn't mean anything about him, it doesn't mean anything about dating and love and the universe and how uh, my parents messed me up or anything like that. That is all drama, right? I stopped attaching all of those meanings and justifications to whether he messages or not messages, whether, whether he's chasing and asking me out and pursuing and, you know, I just stopped doing all of that stuff. And the best way to do that is first to notice the drama, right? Notice the drama, notice when you're swinging from that fantasizing about the dramatic breakup to fantasizing about running off into the sunset together, right? When you're, when you're swinging from one end to the other and you're just like not sure where it's going to go and being uncomfortable, notice that drama. And then I want you to practice something I call neutrality. Practice deliberately neutralizing yourself to that middle ground. And we do that by focusing on the facts, okay? Factually, what is going on? 
factually, I have had three dates with him. We spent 10 hours talking. He's messaged me a bunch of times. I messaged him a bunch of times. That's the facts. Right? No matter what's going on outside of us, if you focus on just the facts, that kind of calms you down a little bit. That's like, okay, if I just focus on the facts, we spent this amount of time together, we went on this many of dates, um, I felt like things were good during the dates, that's what I want you to focus on, ground yourself to the facts, to the reality of everything. If you can't stop the brain chatter, the drama, right? Just make sure you give both scenarios equal airtime. So if you're gonna spend 20 minutes fantasizing about a breakup, a dramatic end to your relationship, spend 20 minutes fantasizing about the continu continuation of your relationship to deeper, more intimacy, more love. Okay, just even it out. Even out the drama on both ends. And of course, I think practicing neutrality, keeping your head on straight, uh, focusing on the facts will help you bring you to the center. It will center you to what is true. So that, if you put that into place, now it's 10 times easier to lean back. Lean back, a lot of times in this case, is about feeling the fear and allowing it to run through you without all the other drama. Okay, yes, of course I'm terrified. I like this guy. Yeah, it's normal. Okay, next. Okay, once you feel it, then you're like, okay, I'm bored of feeling it now. Let's do something else. That's what it means to feel it, let it run through and not attach all the extra meanings to it. And what it means if he messages, what it means if he doesn't mess, you know, and all the head stuff, right? Stay present, stay grounded to the reality, to the facts, and you'll find it so much easier to lean back. Let me know what you're struggling with, with whether this is something you're struggling with, uh, whether it has brought some kind of enlightenment to your situation, what you've gained. I would love to hear from you. Leave me a comment below. And if you're interested in taking your love life to the next level, really up leveling it and accelerating your progress, you may want to consider working with me, doing some coaching with me. If you're interested in that, simply go to katiecoach.com. I would love to get to know you and work with you. So that's all from me. I will talk to you next time. Bye, guys.